Welcome to the third tutorial about Unity's Timeline API. The first video was about the channel restructure of the Timeline API. And in the second part, we developed our own light control track, which changed the settings of a light component over time. Sadly, we only had hard transitions between multiple clips. Today we want to fix this and extend the implementation with so-called mixers. With mixers, it's possible to smoothly blend multiple clips together. We're going to develop everything from scratch, but I'm doing some parts a little bit faster. So if you can follow me, I would recommend you to watch the other tutorials linked in the description. Okay, let's jump in. Step 1. Create the track script. Create a new script called light control track. The light control track inherits from track asset. We also set the track color and binding type with the appropriate class attributes. With that done, we are already able to create the track within the timeline and drag in a light component. Step 2. Create the clip script. Add the light control clip script to your project. The script inherits from playable asset and realizes the iTimeline clip asset interface. Since we want to blend clips together, we need to return clipcaps.blend. Back in the light control track script, we add the track clip type attribute passing the type of our light control clip. We are now able to create light control clips, but get many errors. Step 3. Create the behavior script. Create another script called light control behavior. This time it doesn't manipulate the settings of the light object directly, like in the previous tutorial, but only transports those settings to the mixer, which will be implemented in a second. We want to control the color, intensity, bounce intensity and range of the light. So we create public variables for them. In the create playable method in the clip script, we create runtime playables based on a template. Now the errors are gone and we are even able to blend clips together. But yet our timeline track doesn't change the light settings. Step 4. Create the mixer script. A mixer takes the outputs of several playables as inputs and mixes them together. Create a new script called light control mixer and inherit from playable behavior. Override process frame, which is called each frame when the timeline cursor is moved during runtime or preview mode. Cast the light component and check that it's not null. Now we need to loop through all the inputs. Get input weight gives us the weight of the current light control playable. Can you remember that we encapsulated the light control behavior in the create playable method in the clip script? Here we are doing exactly the reverse. With get input we grab the script playable and with get behavior we put the light control behavior which contains the settings we want to set for the light object out of the shell. Before we apply the settings to the light source we need to sum up or in other words blend the settings together. That's why we need to create temporary variables for each of our light values and initialize them with zero. We also want to sum up the weights in the total weight variable. So in the for loop we add the values of the current input multiplied with its weight. Yeah, and lastly we update the total weight variable. Out of the for loop, we apply the blended values to the light object. Before we can actually see anything in Unity, the mixer must be created somewhere. So switch back to the track script and override the create track mixer method. As with our light control behaviors, the mixer also has to be encapsulated within a script playable. Great, now let's jump back to Unity and change the settings of one of our clips. It seems like the mixer is already working. Well, nearly. Step 5. Reset changed values. The problem is that the light object keeps the settings even when the timeline is stopped. To solve that, we need to remember the light settings before the first frame is processed. Like in the previous tutorial, we introduce a first frame happened flag and store the value in variables when process frame is called the first time. Then in onPlayableDestroy, 
We clear the flag and restore the settings of the light object. But now we are done, right? Hmm. Nope, sorry. Step 6. Blend into default. We have another issue. At the end of the timeline, the light is blended into black. That's comprehensible because if you can remember what we've done within the for loop, you will realize that we multiplied the settings with the weight of the clip. In the last frames of the cutscene, the weight of the last clip converges more and more to zero. So we end up with zero intensity, zero range and literally zero color. Instead of blending into zero at the end of the timeline, we should blend into the default colors. Therefore, we need to calculate the remaining weight, which is 1 minus the total weight. Then, we add the default values multiplied by the remaining weight to the blended values. Awesome! Our custom light control track with blending works perfectly. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it and I hope you are now capable of creating timeline tracks on your own. Please support us on Patreon. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter and at least give us a like and a channel subscription. Have a nice day, it's your sensei.